The 1991 Formula One Custom Championship is brought to you by... Welcome to the showdown! Welcome to the title decision in Japan! Welcome to the unique Suzuka circuit! There's still five drivers who can take the title! The best prospects are Nigel Mansell and Ayrton Senna who are tight at the top of the standings. For a footwork driver, Timo D, currently third in the championship, it must be all in. He's doomed to win and must hope that Mansell does not finish second. Again, pretty, pretty astounded, perplexed even. 3.6 seconds to Nigel. You know me, I'm not alien, so it must be the discrepancy in the AI's performance level, depending on, on the track. It's interesting because look at the, the footage up here, my actual fastest lap, 141.9. And on that lap, I actually overtook not only Mansell, but four other cars and still was about four seconds faster than Mansell. Yes, they are extremely slow on this circuit, especially in some uh, specific corners. It feels like they do not even touch the, the throttle in these corners. Very interesting. Um, well, I think Razer has a lot of work to do here, making the AR just better. As always, the actual grid is somewhat comprehensible. Also, I like the fact that, like in reality, the Benetons were quite good here. Yeah, but the overall performance of the AI is pretty disappointing. I don't expect the AI to be much more competitive in the race, perhaps a bit more, also due to the tire management, but actually not much. I hope I can win this race, and I, of course, hope that Nigel is not able to come in in P2, because that would then grant me the championship title. Perfect conditions. It's warm. It's only partly cloudy. It will stay dry, of course. It's 18 laps at Suzuka. I'm in pole and I'm here to win. Let's go. All right. We're all forward, yeah. Green, 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 let's go. Okay, second and third gear. Oh! And a wiggle slightly touching the grass. And the Williamses are through already. God damn it. Both are through. I'm only in P3 in the first corner. Okay, okay. But cool down. I know I am faster or I should be faster. But of course, a bad start. As always. Okay, and, and it's. This is one of these corners where I'm so much faster. Just look at that. It seems like they don't get on the gas, actually. Okay, but okay, here Ricardo still defended his position. Now for the first time, under the bridge and up to the hairpin. Can I do something here? Yes, I can. Okay, forcing Ricardo to the outside. It's a drag race now, up to the spoons. Breaking that tad later and I'm through. Now chasing Mansell. And look at that, that's the second spot where they don't just don't seem to accelerate. So easy to get by, so easy to pass. I don't understand that. That's clearly a mistake in, in the code. Okay, nevertheless, first time through the through 130R and now to this old hairpin, which I like pretty much because it's pretty difficult uh, to break into. There's this little bump just in the middle of your braking zone. And of course, it's slightly over a crest. You don't see the, the entry, it's pretty blind. Not that easy. Okay, first corner always pretty difficult. I don't shine very much there, actually. The, the AI is faster. But through here, through the S's. Now look at that. Okay, and from here on, 
also, and again, they don't accelerate. Up to... This point here. That's where they get, seem to get on the gas again. Pretty strange behavior. So we're only on lap two. And my lead is already two seconds. Approaching the spoons for the second time, which drives wonderfully with this car. The second spoon and this slightly, slightly falling, falling road. It's, it's not <laughs> difficult, very difficult in this car, but it is in, in other cars, GTs for example. Okay, three seconds, three seconds in one lap. And already 10 seconds to a Lacey in 11th place. Unbelievable, excuse me, unbelievable. And this, of course, is with my, yeah, it, in all modesty, with my limited skills, a really skilled, proficient driver, I think could even go a second a lap faster easily. If you haven't, I really urge you to drive Suzuka, doesn't matter if it's the classic or the new version, try it out. It doesn't matter in what car you may take. The F Classic Gen 3, take another car, it's, it's a wonderful track. It's just, it's super great. It's so fluent, has actually so many, it just has so much personality and character. So much more than most of the of the current F1 tracks, of the modern tracks, which, well, most of them, at least in my opinion, seem pretty generic and all of the same. Yeah, so far it is a pretty easy race. Five seconds, more than five seconds after three laps is my lead. And also the tire wear is pretty okay. It looks worse than it is at this moment. I plan to do one stop whenever the tires feel worn. But through here, through the S's on lap four, I don't feel anything, it just feels perfect. There's no understeer, there's not, not much screeching or squealing. Everything fine. Still able to set very good lap times. I actually plan to go in between lap seven and nine, perhaps slightly before the middle of the race, because in the second part, the, the car will be lighter and the wear will not be that great. Through the spoons, one and two. If you hit the line, it, it just feels wonderful. Like it has to be. Lap six and still going strong. Just watch my line. I can still hit the apexes, the corners, entries and exits. No problem. In these two corners, especially in, in the first one, 
problem is not to unsettle the car too much, not, not to uh, shortcut too much to unsettle the car. Because if you aren't lucky, the car bounces to the left and then onto the sand, onto the, the gravel. So everything's under control at the moment. Only one point damage on the engine, but that's normal, nothing special. One third done, clear lead by now more than 11 seconds. That looks very promising, very promising. My only concern is now, what if the AI does not pit, like in Monza? Because I knew I would have to pit. Of course I wanted to be as safe as possible and keep up my pace to establish a gap as big as possible. Perhaps so big that I could do a pit stop without losing the lead. Or at least after the pit stops still staying in, in the attacking range. So lap, lap 7 now. The right front now is about what is it, 20%? Yeah, and that was, or is the moment, still in the same second, so not bad at all, but this is the moment where I decide to, to come in. So it's gonna be the end of lap eight. Our lead is now over 12 seconds. I'm, of course, further extending it. But it also was clear that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't stay in P1 after my stop. Stops are quick at Suzuka, but well, overall, you have to. Calculate with about 25 seconds, 20 25 seconds from pit entry to pit exit. to come in here's the entry pretty good accelerating up and down that's this, this another strange thing why does the car break so much in front of the pits namely here that's also a thing we, we should communicate to to Reza because that's really not necessary and it's it's also unrealistic Out of the pits, in P3. But no problem at this point, even if the AI, in this case, Patrese and Mansell, don't do a pit stop, I will be able to catch them. New tires, lighter car, should be able to go even faster than in the first stint. And 
look at that, I only lost a total of 13 seconds. If that's correct. With my pit stop. Well, actually, that cannot be correct because I'm now about six seconds behind Nigel and was 13 in front before the stop. But anyways. some ground already on my first out lap after the pit stop and now chase mode is on of course I want to be safe oh there's oh god god that came out of nothing actually out of nothing I, I don't know <laughs> when that happened to me last time I did about, I don't know, 50, 60 laps here in Suzuka. I never had this problem. I know that that turning into P1 can be tricky, but actually not with a working car and with fresh tires. Nevertheless, big mistake, which cost me about five seconds. But remember that, guys, that will play a role actually in the end, without giving away too much now. Yeah, but actually this was my first real, real, real driving mistake, apart from some, some lockups or light, light contacts. This was my first spin. Yeah, and of course it came to a time where I definitely didn't need it. it. Didn't need it. Ugh. Bit too late here. Ugh. Okay, two seconds. Made up already. I think the problem with the spin was that I shifted down too early and the revs were just too high so that the rears locked. It, what wasn't a problem with the car, with the tires or with the grip. Or with the downforce, nope. It was a shifting mistake. Okay. Now it's attacking mode on game. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> already down. The gap's already down to six seconds to Nigel and only three, a bit more than three. To Patrese. Yeah. Of course, their tires are pretty old now. They're on lap. We are on lap 11, and well, but still, I. I ask myself, or I am asking myself at this moment, will they come in or not? Oops! Too early in. <laughs> Completely messed up the line. But nevertheless, <laughs> quicker than Patrese. Yeah, and almost on my qualifying level now. Well, the car felt super. Only two damage on the engine, everything else. Fantastic. Also the tires. Now, 
the wear is pretty even across all tires. So on this now is almost a attacking range. So here we are, the car directly in front of us. Yeah. And then again, watch the exit of the spoons of the second spoon. One, now shifting down to third, second spoon, and now look at that. Excuse me, excuse me. As far as I know, the throttle pedal is on the right. Maybe somebody should tell the cardo. Okay, so of course they're pretty good here in um, breaking into the last chicane. But I know what, how to position my car not to get overtaken. Yeah, he's trying once more, but actually there's no way, no way. Even the footwork is wide enough. Yeah, and look at that. There's Nigel, just some of three seconds ahead of me. So by the end of, the, of this lap, or even earlier, I should stick on his gearbox. Even earlier. <laughs> okay, that's a déjà vu. Like on the pr previous lap. Accelerating flat out to the spoons. Into one. Two, and now look at that. Another déjà vu. Okay. And excuse me, Nigel's the second fastest car on this track. Yeah. All other cars, especially the backmarkers, are significantly slower than him. So my my time difference or my advantage over let's say an Akuri Suzuki or Thierry Butzen, Michele Alboreto must be about six or seven or eight lap seconds per lap. Nigel's still close but yeah I knew that he wouldn't have a chance if he didn't do something completely insane. Okay, this is the part where I always got away. I love this complex here. You can almost drive it as, yeah, well, as one corner or or is in one in wo one floating movement if you get it right. So yeah, now please take a look at the right side where, where it says Alboreto, um, eight seconds in front of me. Now take a look, take a look at that time gap. Now it even says 12.9. And at that moment, I thought now it's back down to seven, six, five already. I mean. Excuse me, but what do these numbers and figures want to tell me? Uh, okay, it's up to nine, it's up to ten, but I can see him there, just, yeah, turning into T1. But anyways, at that moment I thought, okay, one or more, two more laps. And then I will be lapping the back markers.
Yeah, and also at that time, the AI was pitting. The AI was pitting, so completely safe for me now. They were pitting, my, my lead was more than 20 seconds, 25 seconds, and I got closer to these back knuckles. Yeah. Yeah, within half a lap, well, closed, closed the gap from about 10 seconds to zero. Okay. And look at how slow they are. Ugh, almost touching Alboreto, almost. So slow. One, two, three, through. <laughs> In, and of course, now they're on the throttle. Okay, that's about my speed, but through that second spoon, it is... Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Pretty late there. But still okay somewhat. Another twitch. And okay. Lap 16. 26 seconds in front of Piquet at that moment who was who still was to get in I think now approaching the next group of back markers okay accelerating out of this corner where we super quick and now look at that look at that thinking about going passing him or not he's going somewhere and bam bam the mistake of the season the folly of the season yes of course my mistake super bullshit he almost <laughs> he almost braked into a standstill there I didn't expect that to be him so slow and even with that damage 38 on the front wing and 47 on on the right suspension I almost overtook him into the hairpin. And now the next, thing's, next thing happens, look at that. Bam! Alboreto, my teammate, bumping in, into my rear. And that sort of gave me the rest. Because even more damage, and now I had another disadvantage, which was, yeah, uh, waning top speed. Even Alboreto was now able to go through. And I, at that moment, thought, well, come in or not, the, the, the team wants me to get in. The team wants me to get in. But look at that, my, my advantage is still 18 seconds. And I thought, no, 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 Mansell won't be able to, uh, to make up nine seconds or even more prolapse, which you would have to do if you wanted to win that race. No, so I kept out. I kept out, was lucky here because Alboreto went into the pit. So free road, clear road ahead of me. And even with that damage, I thought, hey, I can't do this. I can't do this. Just keep out. They're so slow. I can't do this. I can. I can impersonate Luis. Ooh, yeah. But it wasn't perfect, of course. Right suspension. Pretty much understeer. But, but that's still okay. And Nigel, okay, he made up six seconds in almost half a lap. Or three quarters of a lap. But that still didn't look that bad. Yeah, I wanted to impersonate. I thought I, I could impersonate Hamilton. Remember Silverstone 2020 with the puncture? Verstappen chasing him down. But he made it. Finishing the race in P1, winning. So okay, Nigel still 11 seconds behind me. He didn't make up any ground. Now it's 10.7. 10.3, 10.2, of course, but I also, also knew, okay, through the spoons, I should be able to keep the gap up through spoon two, okay, also here, understeer, understeer, but okay, it's okay, but bam, down to seven seconds, so, and there I noticed, shit, their top speed is, is so much better, and they can break so much harder, or at least Nigel can, that's gonna be tight. Okay, he made up 
almost 10 seconds in the last lap, or he made up 10 seconds in the last lap. And this is gonna be hard. This is gonna be hard. Only six seconds. Ooh. Can I keep him behind me? Of course, at, at that time, the car wasn't feeling all right. Look at the, the tire uh, temperatures. The rear was somewhat foobar. And steering, of course, didn't get easier. Now, Nigel, three seconds, which he made up just between the hairpin and T1. And he, here comes the corner where I suffer. Ugh. Nigel, 1.9, One second, he's behind me. Okay, I can see him in, in my mirrors. And it was this moment that I knew, okay, that probably won't work. Accelerating out of the hairpin. I gave everything. It's full throttle. But hey. There was nothing I could do. Excuse me. He was faster. He could break later. He got through. He got through. Was a tactical mistake by me. But actually guys. I think. Going into the pits. Would have even been worse. Because then. I would have lost the time. Driving into and out of the pits. And also, I didn't know how much the repair time would have been. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So I had to gamble here. I had to go all in or nothing. Well, actually, it's not nothing. But I lost to my championship rival, Nigel Mansell. Who, in the end, wins that race at Suzuka. And I got in in P2 just in front of Ricardo, who finishes third. Well, yeah, guys, uh, that's it. And you know what? Remember my spin on lap, what was it, 11? That actually cost me between four or five seconds. And that is about the time which I lost to Nigel on the finish line. These are the results of the Suzuka Grand Prix in my custom championship, well, Nigel won it, four seconds. Yeah, in front of me, Ricardo completing the podium. Everybody else, well, pretty far behind. Berger, fourth, PK, who in the end also did one stop, but ended up in fifth. Good performance by him, best Benetton result of the season. De Cesaris in sixth, Senna, this time only in seventh, completely chanceless um, of winning the championship and Gachot with the last point actually Schumacher in ninth Alessi 10 Modena 11 then it's Post only in 12 Martini 13 then it's Nakajima Capelli Morbidelli Herbert Guzelmin Brandl Blandel Eric Koma well the usual suspects in the second half Koma it's Suzuki Hakkinen Butsen Bernard and this time, Alboreto in the last spot. Points wise, it's Nigel 15, I got 12, Patrese 9, Berger 7, PK 5, De Cesaris 3, Senna 2, and Gachot 1. And these are the final championship standings after five rounds. Mansell is taking the crown. Congrats to you, Nigel. Champion, three wins, 52 points. I end up in P2, one win, three podiums, 46 points. Senna, three podiums, 39 points. Berger, one win, two podiums, 38. Patrese, three podiums, 35. De Cesaris, one podium, 15 points. And I think very impressive that he outshined both the Ferraris and Benetton's. Superb performance. Prost, 13 points overall. Alessi, 10, who had a pretty bad second half, so to say, of the season. PK, eight points, finally. Gasho running up the top 10 with six points in the second Jordan. So these teams were, who were actually 
yeah, the best back then in 1991 are also the best here. Yeah, then it's 11, Morbidelli, 4 points, Martini, 3 points, and Ivan Capelli, 1 point. Half of the grid received points, got points, and the rest, of course, zero. As a summary, and also as an outlook, there will be some more tweaking on my custom AI file. As I've said, I think the Williamses overall are a bit too strong. I can't um, make Senna any stronger than he actually is, so I will have to decrease the performance levels of the Williamses. That's one thing. The second thing is that, well, the Ferraris are a tad too bad, in my opinion. Also the Benettons, especially Schumacher. The rest is okay. Although I, well, I have to admit, I haven't looked into every single result of every driver of, let's say, the second half of the grid. But I think you, you'll agree with me, well, if I say, well, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, because these are some limitations of accuracy and realism. The biggest factor here is that we actually do not have any DNFs. Right? So, as long as everybody finishes the race, we cannot have realistic or accurate data. Because, imagine, in this setup, someone like Bernard, Herbert, Hakkinen, Utsen, it's impossible for them to achieve any points. Because 95% of the theoretically better drivers will end their race in front of them. So as long as we do not have more accidents, more DNFs, more damage, this is what I can offer. It's only about fine tweaking now, the performance levels, and this is what I'm gonna do. Of course, I'd like to thank you for your interest, for being with me, and I would yeah, very much ask you um, to put your comments down, tell me what you think about it, where you, where you um, think are our potentials for improving, the format or the custom AI or if you have any ideas for me for a new series perhaps. I, of course I'm thinking about um, the card series, the old one or the new one that just came up. I'm pretty open for that because it's huge fun, huge fun. These cars are huge fun. Um, I deeply relate to early, early 90s F1. That's of course a, a personal benefit and yeah well I'm not an expert on card but I think the, the card cars also drive fantastically. They're awesome. So driving-wise, it will be a pleasure to do this. And well, to do this on tracks that I haven't raced um, a thousand laps on would also be a challenge. Tell me what you think. I'm looking forward to it. So for now, I'd like to say thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for accompanying me here. Have a nice day. Enjoy your time. Happy racing. Until the next one. Bye.